Hi everybody, Pastor Ralph here. It's great to be together with you with our coffee time together. We have been looking at the person and work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the follower of Jesus. And we have uh, considered not only how he indwells us and comes into our life and changes, transforms us when we become followers of Jesus, when we believe in him, when we're born again. We've looked at him as our guide who when we don't know where to go, we don't know what decisions to make, the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us and guides us when we choose to submit to his will. We've also looked at the Holy Spirit as the one who empowers us to be able to fulfill God's will and purpose for our lives. Last time, we considered he is our comforter. In other words, he's our advocate. He has our back. When we feel we're against the wall, when we feel that there is nowhere to go, when we feel the world, things of pressure of the world, the Holy Spirit is the one that stands on our behalf and helps us through the most difficult trials and troubles. The Holy Spirit is the one who reminds us that we are never alone. We're never alone. In fact, Jesus said, do you remember when Jesus said to his disciples that he would be with us always till the end of the earth? Well, he is able to do that through the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is God. And we are so thankful for the power and the person of the Holy Spirit. So today we are going to conclude or complete um, our study this time. And we could do many, many, many studies on the person and work of the Holy Spirit. But today we want to consider this aspect of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our refiner. Now that's a, a strange word to describe the Holy Spirit. And you may wonder, well, what does that mean? When I think of refiner, I, I, I think of uh, my dad who worked at Stelco in Hamilton, the steel company. And I think of those huge smelting plants that he worked in and the fire that um, took those metal and, and molded them and purified them. And that was the, the pure purpose of those, that he would, that those fires, those furnaces would take the raw ore that had been transported to them and they would burn them and melt them and liquefy them so that the impurities would rise to the top and there part of my dad's job was scraping off all those impurities so that the metal that they were uh, collecting and preparing so that it could be refined. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in my life and yours. That he takes that which really isn't pretty, that stuff that we know that isn't part of God's plan for us, and he refines us. In the Bible, there are a couple times where the uh, Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as fire. The first time we read about it is in the book of uh, Exodus when Moses ascended Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, the law of God. And we read there that the, the Lord descended onto Mount Sinai in the form of a thundering cloud and fire. The earth shook with the weight of God's glory and a fire could be seen atop the mountain. Years later, the Bible records for us that, that when Jesus uh, had, uh, was entering his ministry, he came to John the Baptist at uh, the river's edge of Jordan, and there he asked John to baptize him. And just before that, the Holy Spirit had revealed to John when people asked him if he were the Messiah, John said, no, there is one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. And the hearers of that would have recognized that reference right back to Sinai, that God 
came down in fire. And that Messiah, when he came, would not just have the anointing of God's fire, but it would be God himself descending and rescuing Israel. Then about three and a half years later, in an upper room in Jerusalem, 120 followers of Jesus were gathered where they had been told by the Lord to wait for the promise that God had given, the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, we discover how the Holy Spirit came upon that group in the form of wind and fire. He came in Sinai. God came in fire. John prophesied that when Messiah came, God would come in fire. And in Acts chapter 2, Holy Spirit came in fire. Why fire? Because fire reminds us of the holiness of God. Let me go back to the Old Testament. In Isaiah chapter 6, you'll remember when uh, Isaiah was gripped by the vision that he had of the Lord. It was a vision of fire. God took from the coals of the altar the fire to anoint Isaiah's mouth in order for him to preach. The fire was given to transform, to inform, and to refine. What does it mean for you and I that the Holy Spirit is our refiner? And are you willing to allow God to pur purify you even in your hidden areas? Earlier today, <laughs> Sue had a compulsion to clean our car good thing she did. It's kind of something that I have been overlooking these last three months. You know how it is. You just sort of get used to your environment. You get used to what's happening. You get used to it and so that you can't even see what's going on and around. And for whatever reason, Sue just said, I got to clean the inside of this car. Now, nothing had changed with the car itself. It still ran, the motor is still good, but the inside was just a mess. So she proceeded to clean, and in the cleaning, she found something that we had been looking for for almost a year. It was just a, a, a little device that we had that we could put into the back um, seat of our car, uh, into the... Um, into, into the power source that we could use to um, keep our mobile devices charged. We'd been looking for it for months, but because of the mess that we had become used to, we couldn't find it. When the Holy Spirit comes in fire, he takes away the mess to find that which we need to serve God and to be empowered by God, and to follow God. That's what it means for the fire of God to refine us. He cleans up the mess that we have been ignorant of because we've gotten used to it. But he sees what's in our heart, and he cleans it up so that we are ready to do what God wants us to do and helps us find that which we need in order to fulfill God's plan. He cleans up. He comes in power. He comes to scour us of our grit and grime. He removes the furniture around in our lives in order to cleanse us. What does he cleanse us of? What does he help remove? He cleanses us of resentment, anger, shame, addictive behavior, and anything else that can create a distance between you and God. So I encourage you today, if you haven't done so already, first of all, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, to open your heart right now 
and ask him to forgive you of your sin, to come and to be the Lord of your life and Holy Spirit. He's not going to make you do anything weird, but he is going to give you hope. He's going to give you peace, that sense of forgiveness. He's going to refine you. If you're looking for power to serve him, trust the Holy Spirit. If you're looking for something that you haven't been able to find, ask Holy Spirit to refine you today and to clean up the mess and to help you get your life in order. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit who comes to uh, remind us we're children of you, to remind us, Lord, to empower us to serve you. You comfort us and you have our back when we're in trouble. When we don't know where to go, you guide us. And Lord, when we are in a mess, Holy Spirit, you come in fire and you clean us all up. We commit ourselves to you afresh today in Jesus' name. God bless everyone. See you again soon. This is Pastor Ralph signing off. Be safe, be kind, and most of all, be blessed.